When God called me, I said, Mom, dead, bye, I'm going. John Wilson, the world's leader and handles all of our events, came to Dallas, to the conference there in Dallas, told his mom and, mom and dad, I'm going to go work with Benny and I did not even know his name. Never met the man. He said, I'm leaving. Packing, he was gone. He was to be a CPA. His father had a big, he still does, he had a big, you know, piece of property there in Alabama. And they, they, they wanted John to be a CPA and run the business for his dad. He said, no, dad, God called me to work with Benny Hinn. I did not even know John Wilson when he said that to his parents. And his mom was praying. She said, God, please use my boys, use my son. And he comes and sits in the conference crying. And the Lord spoke to me and said, uh, I never had done that really, not hardly that often. Anyway. I made the announcement. I was looking for, for the replacement for Kent Alex because he was going to get to begin a, a great church. And, uh, and so there was John. And the woman said, he's talking about you. She, she began prophesying to him. He began crying and he came to the back and was still crying. Then talked to his father on the phone. He said, Brother Him, we are willing to wash your feet. We love you so much. And God said, Hire that young man. I did on the spot. He's been with me now, did this over 10 years or more. Runs all the crusades that you see on television. All because the young man was willing to say, Bye! I'm going! Yeah, there's a price. When God called me, I said bye to my mom and dad too. It wasn't easy. Elijah said to Elisha, come on, let's go. No, let me go kiss my father and my mother. There is no record that he did. In fact, what the Bible does say is he destroyed the instruments he had been using. Look what it says, come on. In verse 21, and he returned back from him Watch this, watch this. It doesn't say he went home. They were walking ahead of the oxen. See, you got to see it to understand it. The oxen are over here. Elijah kept walking. Elijah comes running after him after he put the mantle on him. Let me please go kiss my father. What have I got to do with you? He turns back and rather than going to say bye to his mom and dad, he says he returned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slew them. He wanted to prove to Elijah he was serious. He walks back and he kills the animals. He destroyed his instruments of business. He was a farmer. And then it says, And boiled their flesh with the instruments of the oxen and gave unto the people and they did eat. Then he arose and went after Elijah and ministered unto him. Rather than going home, he goes back, he destroys the oxen, destroys the instruments, boils the oxen, feeds the people, says, all right, Elijah, let's go. And minister to him. He didn't go kiss his father and his mother. There's no record of it. The minute the anointing of God touches your life, don't you dare go back to that old business you had. God won't trust you with it then. If God anoints you, you leave everything behind. Are you listening? You start serving God. Are you listening? God, look, the Lord will show you what to do, but there will be a sacrifice. There will be a giving up of something that you've been holding on to for security. The word of God I'm giving you. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Now, that mantle, once it comes upon your life, it will demand a price. And that price may very well be something like Elisha did. Give up that thing you've been doing. Give up that business you've been in. Give up that whatever relationship you had with somebody. In his case, it was his family. It was his farming it, it, it was his farming <laughs> equipment and business and life. He said, We're going, Elisha, and my job from now on is to minister to you. Now 
power of God came the second that mantle touched Elisha. And it was the mantle. Remember, when Elijah was in the cave, when did he hear God's voice? When he covered his face with his mantle, 1 Kings 19.13. The power of God not only will demand something from you, but the power of God will make the voice of God clear to you. Did you hear what I just said? Because in 1 Kings 19.13 it says, 1 Kings 19.13, it says that when he, when, when he was in that cave, and the voice says, What doest thou here, Elijah? What did he do? He covered his face with his mantle and heard the voice of God. You can't hear God's voice without his anointing. It's impossible. And now he comes to the river of Jordan in 2 Kings 2, verse 8 through verse 14. And he divides the river with his mantle. It's only the anointing of God that can move obstacles out of your way. God's anointing demands a price. God's anointing will make God's voice clear. God's anointing removes obstacles out of your way. Wow, we all need that anointing. Sometimes when, I, when I'm teaching, I begin preaching, which is good too. Because Jesus taught and preached, and times you, you, you actually do both at the same time. Sometimes you only teach, sometimes you only preach, sometimes you, you do both, and tonight I'm doing both and I'm loving it. Now, important character qualities which must be in your life if you want God to anoint you. Are you ready for them? Write them down. I'm giving you a whole lot tonight. I'm going to miss next week, so I'm going to fill you up. Here are important character qualities God looks for in you before He anoints you. So I told you about, you, you've got to come to the cross and be beaten by the cross, face the cross, and lay down your life, and be cleansed by the blessed cross. You, you've got to be shaken with trials, and God will cause that without your permission. He'll cause trials to come your way, that, that, that you'll think, Lord, why? But they'll drive you to, to His throne room, and dependence upon Him. And yeah, there will be, that's separation from those that should not be around you, so the oil can flow out of you. God will use that mantle in your life. And that mantle will show you the price you have to pay. I don't know what that price is, but I can tell you what my price was. In fact, I'm still paying that price. Because it's a continual price. You can't go back to those things. Forget it. There'll be things that come your way. God says, no, you cannot touch that. Because the anointed cannot and are not permitted to have these things. Example, Michael says, I am not allowed to watch television. None who work with me close enough are allowed to watch television. I'm not allowed to look at a newspaper. Or during a crusade, that's correct. Or listen to the radio. Not even in the car on the way to and from a place. I am not allowed to even hear what's going on in this world. If Steve Brock or Eric, don't tell me. If they stop, don't tell me. God won't allow that. That's a price. I'll gladly pay it. Who wants to know anyways? All this nonsense out there. It doesn't mean a thing to me. During a crusade, I can't allow my own wife in the same bedroom with me. With me. Why? Because the things that affect her begin to affect me. It can affect the whole crusade. She understands that. Thank God. During a crusade, my children can't just be normal running around around me and coming to ask for this and that. No, there's a price. So when there is a crusade, there are demands placed by the anointing on you. that says, no, you can't do that now. And there's other things that happen. I'm not allowed by the Lord to watch certain things ever. But you can, but not me. Why? Forbidden. Thank God. 